Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are going to put this thing through its paces. We're going to be doing some haste to mining down here at the lowest level that we possibly can, which is the level just above Deep Slate. We're going to be mining out a layer here and we're going to be mining it for quite some distance in each direction. And it's kind of a way, I guess, of comparing haste mining with moss mining when it comes to acquiring resources and digging out the area of a chunk. Bearing in mind, of course, that the problem with the moss mining technique is that you can't move horizontally all that much because moss typically spreads in an area that doesn't have blocks on top of it. So once you've walled off an area when you're moss mining, you're not likely to extend the area any further than that. Whereas the advantage of mining with a haste beacon is that we can extend out in multiple directions, not just the radius of the beacon itself, that 50 block radius we talked about in yesterday's episode, but we can extend even further than that as long as the haste effect lasts. So for 16 seconds running in pretty much a straight line in this direction, we should be able to make a decent amount of headway and from there we can kind of square off a large area that we've dug out in its entirety in order to get resources. We're not going to be moving too far up or too far down, we're pretty much going to be staying on top of the highest level that we see Deep Slate generating, which is right here at about Y8. As you can see from the terrain around us, there aren't really any Deep Slate blocks that generate above that point, making it kind of the ideal place to mine out using a haste beacon where you can instamine stone but not Deep Slate. And we're going to be collecting all of the resources that we acquire from this in a series of chests that I'm probably going to place around the beacon. Obviously, one of the main things we're looking for is how many precious resources we gather. So I'm going to throw the copper ore in there and we should hope to find some iron, lapis, gold, diamonds, maybe a bit of redstone. There's probably a mix of materials around this layer of the world. Although, of course, the precious stuff like diamonds and redstone is going to be generating a lot more further down in the world. So instead of a vertical slice of a chunk, this is more like a horizontal slice of several chunks. And we're going to be mining that out using two different pickaxes. I've got my Ace of Hearts, the one that we upgraded to efficiency 5 in the previous episode, but I've also spent a bit of time at my Enderman farm in between episodes so that we could upgrade this Fortune 3 pickaxe to efficiency 5 as well, and I've named this one the King of Diamonds because in theory this is the one that's going to be getting us the most diamonds if we end up mining some diamond ore with it. But now with efficiency 5, this can instamine stuff as well, and it's a good thing that it can because honestly, we need a lot of cobblestone. I've talked in the past about how how we don't get a great deal of cobblestone from mining anymore because more often than not you're going down to the deep slate layers and you get cobbled deep slate from mining up those areas with fortune instead of regular cobblestone and you might think that's fairly insignificant people don't tend to build as much with cobblestone if they want a more varied and interesting build palette but really the thing with cobblestone is you need it for crafting redstone components like pistons observers dispensers all of that kind of stuff those cannot be crafted with cobbled deep slate we need to get hold of some cobblestone and that's the reason we ended up building a cobblestone generator in a previous episode but this is probably the fastest way we can mine cobblestone naturally and so i'm going to be using both pickaxes to acquire myself some building material and some redstone component crafting material as we dig out this area now like the moss mining project i am probably going to be leaving a lot of the ores here intact so we can take a look at distribution and see what works if we move laterally throughout the chunk see if we find a lot more resources that way or at least some of the stuff that we want to but any thing that I end up mining by mistake because yes we are haste mining and obviously if I'm just spamming mining like this occasionally we'll knock out a block of ore here and there. I'm going to put all of the takings from that in one of these chests so that we'll be able to kind of total up everything that we gather from this chunk once we're done here. And one of the first things we're going to notice is that we'll need to light up the area a lot more because yes, we will end up encountering caves like this. There are clearly going to be some caves down at this level, caves that leave it a little bit further down into the world. We're going to try and ignore those as best we can, but we're going to need a decent amount of torches to light this area up. So we need to make sure that we bring a little bit of coal with us from the surface. And frankly, I think I have enough coal in my storage system or even here at the dripstone cave which is where we are we're still underneath the dripstone cave where we left off the last episode we should have enough coal to light this area up with a decent amount of torches especially now that mobs need complete darkness to spawn we should have no problem lighting the area up well enough we're also going to be on the lookout for chunks in which slimes will spawn because honestly if you're not going to rely on external tools to look up the slime chunks of a world where cave slimes will spawn frequently then this might be one of your best bets at finding a slime chunk 
naturally. In future, we want to convert a chunk of the world into a slime farm. We need to know the chunks of the world that slimes will spawn, because they will spawn in very specific locations. And yes, there may be occasional creepers wandering in from the nearby caves, and yes, I have started accidentally breaking down the ores on occasion. We've got a bit of raw copper and raw gold here already, but that's what this chest is for. Right, I see at no time like the present, we're going to get on and do a whole bunch of mining here. We're going to mine this out basically to the point where the haste effect is going to run out for us and we're going to square off this whole area into a massive dug out layer with the beacon and we'll see how many resources we end up with after all of that is done. And after about three hours of work this is the result. We have <laughs> a pretty large space dug out here although this is only really half of the space we could dig out thanks to the beacon here and you'll notice there are a couple of slimes bouncing around. We'll get to that in just a second but if you take a quick look around here we can see a pretty decent amount of ores have been exposed and I was thinking you know there aren't really a great deal of diamonds around here I cleared out this whole half of the room and I mean quarter of the room probably in the grand scheme of things and we ended up with a lot of iron on display a fair amount of copper lots of lapis I think this may have been actually the most ideal coordinate we could dig for lapis at because boy there's a lot of lapis around here we got some gold we even had a little bit of coal this far down in the world bits and pieces of redstone the only diamond I had found up to this point I had dug out kind of by mistake and let me show you a little bit of the resource chest that I showed off earlier if we just probably just take care of this little slime down here we have six diamonds that I managed to dig out of the wall by mistake as I was digging just some straight tunnels in each direction so that I could figure out which way we were going and I have a bit of the other resources that I grabbed by mistake as I was just hastily mining out all of the stone blocks but then over here on this side of the room, I encountered a diamond kind of in the floor over here. Whereabouts was that again? It was, yeah, it was right here. I put a torch next to it so I could make sure that I knew where it was, even though there's torches everywhere down here. And I found a piece of diamond that I thought, oh, okay, we got a, we got a diamond down here. Okay, we'll see if we can dig out any more diamonds from around the outside of this, but it seems unlikely that it is any more than just a single piece of diamond ore. Fair enough, I thought. We are probably not going to encounter that many diamonds. This seems like a relative fluke compared to all of the other stuff that we've dug out so far we don't really see any more diamonds over there then we got to this side of the room and this side of the room has not one not two not three but four where's the fourth one i'm sure there was a fourth one there we go there's a fourth diamond vein over here so there's actually quite a lot of diamonds in fact these two veins here i believe i think it's these two the copper one and that one if we press f3 and g in the same chunk so amazingly we have two veins of diamond this high up in the world remember there's only eight layers above this in which diamond ore can even generate we have a bunch of diamonds all in a row here in a kind of diagonal line actually which makes me wonder if we should maybe start digging in diagonal lines more when we're searching for diamonds but look at this we have a bounty of diamonds over here and of course a bunch more of the other ores that we're looking for gold ore obviously starts to generate below y24 we got redstone below y16 and over here we of course you can see from the amount of copper ore around here and the granite that is receding into the ceiling we dug into a huge vein of copper so we have a bunch more copper ore blocks here as well with the promise of even more around it and i expect if i dug through a few more of these blocks we'd probably find one of those full raw copper blocks hiding up here somewhere as well so here i was thinking that yes maybe a horizontal slice of the terrain would expose more ore blocks but they wouldn't necessarily be all that interesting to us but i'm finding this more and more interesting as i go because there are a decent amount of ore blocks at this height. Remember, this is Y8 in the world. So this is really not that deep and is certainly not the area where we would expect to be finding a lot of diamonds. But having dug out this entire area for three hours, we've only spent a fraction of the time, probably about one third of the time I spent moss mining that chunk over in the mountains, and we found what I would assume is an equivalent amount of ores. We have certainly found a few more veins of diamond ore than I was expecting, and we still have half of the room to go. So another two hours, we'd probably be able to dig out the entirety of this section over here. We might even find some more diamond veins for our trouble. But of course, the major difference between the moss mining chunk and this one is that I have kept all of the resources and as you can see I've had to expand my storage a little bit here because aside from this chest that we were keeping all of the valuables and stuff in I have not one not two not three not four there are about 
nine chests here. Uh, we got a small chest there, and this chest here is pretty much full, but that small chest is not. We have a whole bunch of chests full of different resources, which we can use for building. We can use them for redstone components. We can convert them into all sorts of other crafting blocks as well. And honestly, I do think that it's worth keeping all of these resources for the future because the cobblestone at the very least is going to allow me to craft enough observers and pistons and dispensers and stuff that we can fuel our redstone contraptions for the next little while. And all of the natural stone that we have in here can end up getting used for a variety of things as well. It's, you know, repeaters and comparator bases, but it's also so things like stone brick. We can get some chisel stone, some smooth stone if we smelt it. There's all kinds of stuff that we can do with that now. And so I genuinely think it has been worth carving out this entire area just for the stone. But I think it's also been worth doing for the amount of resources on display here. And so we're going to do what we did with the moss mining chunk. And I'm going to take every ore out of this area with silk touch probably at first so that we can gather up everything in a single chest and show it all and see if it equates to the amount of ore we got out of the moss mining chunk as well. I am going to do something different to what I did with the moss mining chunk and we are going to take the ores out of the floor because effectively at this point we're looking for ores, we're looking for all of the stuff that we can see where the previous one was more of an experiment to see exactly what was in the boundaries of a chunk. So I'm going to start grabbing everything I see in this room we'll throw it all into a single chest or a double chest if it can't fit into a single and we'll see how much stuff we are left with so this is probably going to take me a little while I will be right back so that's all that taken care of and honestly this place looks a little bit more boring now but all of the exciting stuff is here in this chest and as you can see we have a lot of iron we have a lot of copper as well and obviously as we are underneath my dripstone cave base right now, we're going to see a higher yield of copper anyway because this is a dripstone cave and you get more copper ore there. But we obviously have a pretty decent amount of iron. Remember that iron is probably going to be, you know, reaching maximum generation around Y16-ish and it doesn't immediately drop off after that. So plenty of iron ore down here at this level. A whole lot of lapis over a stack of lapis ore plus a lapis deep slate there as well. The gold and redstone in pretty decent supply. I've seen more redstone of course but this is honestly pretty good. Still a reasonable amount of coal. Remember that coal is also going to completely stop generating below Y0 so it's good that we have a decent amount of coal still at this coordinate. And the most surprising thing of all to me is the amount of diamonds we found because we found 17 diamond ore and one deep slate diamond 18 diamond ore in total which if we're using fortune 2 we could probably expect to get about 40 diamonds out of that so not too bad one of the veins in the floor was actually a pretty large vein so really happy with the amount of diamond ore we were able to get because honestly i was not expecting to get all that much Back in previous versions of Minecraft, people would use beacons to go down to Y11, which was, you know, roughly 10 blocks above the bedrock floor at the bottom of the world and was kind of generally considered to be the best coordinate for mining diamonds because that's where you found a great deal of the lava lakes and stuff generating and it was about halfway between the point at which diamonds would start to generate and bedrock at the bottom of the world where you couldn't mine stuff out anyway. So Minecraft 1.18 changed all that by introducing the new approach to ore generation where we have all of these deep slate layers in the world and I expected to not really come away from this mining trip with a great deal of the more precious resources and I am quite happy to have been proven wrong up to this point. Now it may be that that was largely a fluke because that area over there seemed extraordinarily diamond rich whereas the other half of the room had no diamond ore whatsoever so it is kind of unusual to me to have found this amount of diamonds in here. I wouldn't expect to get this amount of diamonds from digging out this area every single time and of course it has required me to dig you know like nine double chests of resources at least nine double chests of stone and diorite and all of the other stuff besides. I suppose we we should also count some of these other resources that we got in here in the equation as well. So we have a decent amount of raw material here that I mined with Fortune instead of Silk Touch. But realistically, it's not that bad of a proposition to spend a couple of hours down here digging out all of the materials from this layer, getting all of the stone and whatnot, but also coming away with a decent amount of ores. It's not going to net you tons and tons of diamonds or anything like that if that is your goal here but it is a pretty decent amount. And I don't know if it really makes sense to compare what we got out of this area to what we got out of the moss mining chunk, because I was pretty much certain the moss mining chunk would not yield that large an amount of resources because the game only chooses to generate a certain amount of ores a certain amount of times per chunk. And what we saw in that 
mountain was basically a lot of coal and iron generating on the surface and a lot more of the other resources further down but you could only be guaranteed to get a certain amount before honestly like the amounts of diamonds and redstone and what all would just cap out and so I think I've got more gold here than we got from that mountain I think we've got a little bit more redstone perhaps as well because of being able to move laterally horizontally we're obviously covering lots and lots of different chunks and so with each new chunk we explore we get the chance for a couple more veins of material to generate obviously if we were able to dig every single chunk in this giant cleared out space down to whatever low coordinate of the world we wanted to end up at then we find tons of resources that way but that would take an awfully long time even with a beacon especially since we'd be hitting deep slate and at that point the only real way to instamine deep slate is to convert it into moss <laughs> and get hold of a whole bunch of bone meal and just moss mine the entire place as well so these are really two different methods of acquiring resources and clearing out an area on the one hand you have moss mining which leaves you with a giant hole in the ground a bunch of ores and potentially a ton of moss if you're keeping hold of all of that but you don't end up with all of the raw material like the stone and everything that you can use for other things. And in the beacons case, we lose the ability to mine instantly through deep slate, so it's kind of harder to clear out a vertical area but in terms of horizontal areas, I think a beacon probably wins out over moss mining because you can't really spread moss to this wide of an area unless the area is already dug out. And I would recommend using a beacon to do that in the first place. But I was almost tempted to write off beacon mining when I heard that we would get more diamonds lower down in the world because I was thinking there was no way we were going to find diamond ore at Y8 anymore. Or if we did, it was going to be a relatively slim chance to find it at all. And what this has proven is that it is still at least somewhat viable. Probably not the best method out there, but honestly, I would take the joy of instamining and being able to clear out such a large area of terrain over tediously branch mining my way through deep slate. And I will probably end up doing that with a beacon so we can see how fast we can go compared to mining without a beacon. But honestly, I think it's quite cool that we can get such a broad range of resources from digging out an area like this. Now back to what I was saying before about the slimes, because we may have noticed that there were a couple of slimes spawning around here. And honestly, the beacon might be one of the best ways of locating a slime chunk in a world without using external tools like using chunk base which is a, a website people often use to look up details of a minecraft world you just input your seed you can search for different structures in the world and it will also tell you the coordinates of slime chunks people also download mods that allow them to take a look at some stuff like slime chunks to generate wireframes in the world around where the slime chunks in the world are but if you want to find a slime chunk in your world naturally the only real way to do it was to look around in caves stumble upon a slime and you basically have no guarantee at that point where the slime had spawned and whether it had just moved over to another chunk because unlike other hostile mobs slimes don't freeze in place once you walk 128 because unlike other mobs slimes don't freeze in place when you walk more than 32 blocks away from them they pretty much jump around wherever they are as long as they haven't despawned or frozen outside of your simulation distance and so the slimes that spawned in here were an indication that there is a slime chunk somewhere inside of here but we don't precisely know where that is because the slimes that spawned could have just hopped over the boundary from one chunk to another and if we ended up building a slime farm in that area we could find it was not at all productive so what i'm going to do is return to the surface right here mostly so i can see if i've got any food around because i'm pretty much out of food having mined out that whole area let's probably crack into the ender chest and see if we've got some stuff hanging around in any of these shulker boxes there we go got some golden carrots in there i might as well grab those and we'll go and trade at the village for a few more a little later and then we're going to try something a little different we're going to fly out of the cave entirely and then we're going to drop back down into the area where our beacon strip mine is where we've cleared up all of that area and hopefully what that should do is give some of the mobs in the caves a chance to despawn because we got 128 blocks away from them which frees up some of the hostile mob cap now if we drop back on down into our beacon strip mine which i'm hoping we can do nice and quickly to avoid mobs spawning elsewhere we might end up, oh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's happened. We might have ended up with a couple of slimes spawning in these areas around here. Now, I know what you're thinking, Pix. You're probably not going to get any mobs spawning in here because it seems like you've lit the whole place up with torches. Well, the good news 
is that slimes that spawned in caves will spawn in basically any light level. They aren't subject to the same restrictions that other hostile mobs or even slimes that spawn on the surface in swamps are. Yeah, it looks like we missed one iron ore in the ceiling up here as well. There's a little bit hiding up there for us. But the idea really is that we can try and spawn a few slimes in here. And a few slimes did spawn just as I was running around. And if we're able to observe which chunks they spawn in, or if we're able to get a vague idea of the area, we can fence off each of those chunks and see if any slimes spawn in there in the meantime. And that will give us an idea of where underneath our dripstone cave we could build a more permanent slime farm, which is one of the other ways a beacon could really come in handy because that would allow us to dig out a large area and basically turn a entire chunk of the cave here into a slime farm. We can also try and get slimes to spawn by running left to right in this area because if there are some slime chunks down the far end, if we get 128 blocks away from them and despawn any mobs on that side of the cave and then we run back, there's a chance the game might try and spawn some slimes in here. But this whole process is a bit like waiting for a package to arrive and as I'm running around here I realise that I've actually left a whole bunch of iron ore in the floors and the ceiling here that I just didn't notice as I was running around collecting all of the more exciting stuff. So that's a few extra goodies put into this chest and I think that's probably where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft survival guide. We will look into slime farming another time but honestly the beacon could be the key to finding a slime chunk in your world if you are out of other options and don't want to rely on some of those external tools. I'm going to spend a bit of time between episodes carting all of the cobblestone and stuff back to my storage system mostly so I can make some more redstone components and so forth but also so we can have those building materials in reserve for the future. Folks thank you so much for watching this episode of the the Minecraft survival guide. I do hope you've enjoyed this look at haste mining and good luck finding those diamonds in your own worlds. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.